In this series of videos, I'm going to show you how you can use Google Docs to create a more designed document, such as a policy brief or some other document that would include images and, and graphs and maybe text callouts and things like that. Um, I'm going to assume that you already know how to log in to Google Drive and to get started. Um, and so where I'm actually going to start is, uh, so once you sign into Google Drive, you'll see something that looks kind of like this. And you'll go to new. So wherever you want to create this document, you want to go to the, the folder where you want to create this document. Um, I just picked a random folder so you can see that there's some folders and files in it. And then I click new and under Google Docs, if I just click on Google Docs, it will open up a blank document, which is fine. But what I want to show you where to start is that there are templates available for you to be able to uh, start with a pre-designed document. So I'm gonna click on from a template. Once the templates pop up, you can see that there's lots of different templates. There's templates for resumes and letters and personal and work and all sorts of things. And so I can, I can see different options available. Some of these you might be interested in. Some of the work options actually have a few that, like project proposals are sort of similar to a policy brief. Um, we have these brochures and newsletters that have, again, some similarities. But I'm gonna keep going down. Um, training proposals, uh, request for proposal, these are also sort of similar in the sales section. And then down in the education section, uh, there are a couple more that are labeled, actually labeled report. We have more traditional reports, which are just text, um, but we have these other two, um, the simple and the Lux reports um, that are, that include a little bit more designed elements to them. Some, at least they come with an image and they have uh, a little bit more design to them. And then you can just click on whichever one you're going, you like the best. You can uh, create both of them and, and start from there. Um, and and then, uh, then you can start editing them inside of Google Docs. So this is what the Lux template looks like. Again, it only gives you two pages, but it kind of get an idea of, of kind of the style of it. And this is the simple report. Again, just kind of getting the style of it so you have an idea of what it looks like. Um, so whichever one you like, I'm actually going to be using the Lux template as the template that I use throughout the series of the videos, and then we'll be making some edits to it along the way. All right, for this section, I want to talk about how to deal with text in Google Docs. Now, again, most people are already familiar with how to deal with text in general, but since this is primarily a word processing uh, piece of software, um, on the web, um, I want to talk about how we can manipulate the the text to fit with the template and the theme that we've already chosen. So, in the case of this particular theme um, or template, um, I've copied and pasted in some text from a, a paper that uh, Dr. Rakowski and I were were writing. And actually, I want to pull another piece. Uh, from this because it will help you see what happens when you go from one platform to another. So I'm just going to pull a short section. So I'm going to get the results here and I'm actually just going to go down here to where it says table two because I want to use some of that. So then I'm going to come back into my uh, Google Doc here. Now if I just hit um, control V or command V to paste or come up to edit paste what's gonna happen is it's actually gonna pull it in in a totally different format. Notice that this way that it's formatted, which is according to the template, looks much different than this. This is now you know, Times New Roman. This is exactly how I had it formatted over here, basically. And the um, line spacing is all different and everything. So that can be a problem if you just copy and paste directly from wherever you wrote your text directly into Google Docs. If you're typing in Google Docs, it's not that big of a deal. Now, there is a way to sort of fix this. Um, I can select uh, sections of text and I can come up here and I can actually change the heading to be heading one or heading two or whatever it happens to be. Um, so this would be a heading two. 
and that is changing it. So if I triple click one, one, two, three, and I change this to be normal text, it does fix my issue. But that can be kind of annoying to go through every single piece, because I have to do that for everything that I'm bringing in. Maybe that's the easiest way for you, and that's totally fine. Or the other option, it's, it's slightly more complicated in that it just uses more keys. It, if you come up to here to um, edit, you should see a paste without formatting. Sometimes that doesn't work. It doesn't really bring it in in the right way. But if you do Command Alt Shift V, or uh, sorry, Control Alt Shift V on Windows, or Command Option Shift V on the Mac, that will paste it in and it will take whatever the formatting was here, it will just pull that formatting in. So most of my formatting came in correctly. What didn't come in correctly were my headings, which is fine. That's just a few clicks to fix those. So again, that's it's a little bit complicated, but Control Alt Shift V on a Windows and Command Option Shift V on a Mac. And that will paste it in with the formatting that's already existing in the template. So that's kind of the beginning of the text. And again, as I showed here, I can select sections and I can change the headings. The nice thing is, is that it keeps all of the, it keeps the template headings just like it has up here. Okay, we have our, our heading one. This is a title, this is a subtitle. We have heading two and this is heading three. So you can get a feel for what all of those look like. There is a heading four, but it's not being used. If you needed to use it, that is an option. One way that we could take a quote or some short piece of text that we have and make it kind of stand out a little bit more is just simply using a table. So I'm just gonna hit enter from the line above. I'm gonna to go to insert table and it's just gonna be a one by one. So right now it's the length of this whole thing, but I can change that later. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna copy and paste this little section of text. Then what I can do is if I right click on it, I can go to table properties. And I have different options here. So first of all, I wanna make the table border a little bit thicker and I'm gonna choose a different color. They have this green that goes kind of well with this uh, kind of other brownish color. Um, and then I want the, I want pretty much everything to be in the middle here. Uh, let's see, I don't think I wanna change anything else. I am gonna change the background color in just a minute as well, but I just wanted you to see, okay, this is what it looks like. I don't love that it goes across the whole section of it, so I'm gonna make this a little bit tighter. All right, I can pull that back up. So this kind of pops a little bit more. It doesn't look perfect. Like I don't love that it's um, just these straight edges. I wish there was a little bit more of a design to it. Uh, we don't have a lot of options when we're dealing with a table, but there are a few options that we do have. So if I select all of these, um, I can do like a dotted view. It's one option. You can also do uh, a more of a dashed look. That might look better. You can also just kind of play with the thickness here with this button. So I could go, I could try it at a six and that gives it kind of a different feel. And then I'm probably also gonna wanna go in here and uh, I'm gonna change this font to be a little bit bolder. I mean, I could just hit bold. That would be fine too. Um, or maybe I wanna make it 14 point font. Um, so I can kind of play around with this just a little bit to kind of get a feel for how I want it to, to look. Now it's spanning the page, which I don't like, so I might have to bring that back down a little bit, or maybe I'm gonna, maybe I just need to move this whole thing, um, whole thing up. One of the issues you have with dealing with a table is I can't, I can't just like click and drag it up because that just, I'm just dragging the edges. Um, to make it you know, bigger or smaller or whatever. Um, so that's one issue with a table that if I want to select the table, I kind of have to 
select it like this, and then I could copy it or I could cut it if I wanted to move it up here, and then I could paste it in. So that put it kind of in the middle of this thing here. So that's one way that I can kind of uh, deal with little callouts if I wanted to take just a small section that I wanted to put really big. So like maybe I just want that part to be big. So this one is nice. It's a lot smaller uh, or a lot, a lot less amount of text. And so I can probably make this pretty big. Um, if I make this just big enough, oops. See if I can fit this onto two lines instead of three. Hmm, maybe 24 is going to be too much. Maybe we'll go down to like 20. Anyways, you can kind of play around with that and, and find something that, that will work. So this is one way of doing it is using a one by one table. It is not perfect. Um, I can't really do uh, text wrapping. It doesn't really give me an, an option to wrap the text around it because it's, it's meant to be just in line with the text. But there is another option that I can use. The other option that I can use for like a text call out is to use a drawing. Now, drawings also have some drawbacks, which I'll show you in just a minute, but I'm gonna take this, um, this little quote here. I'm gonna go to insert drawing new. And this brings up this little box where I can basically create a drawing. Now, I have all sorts of shapes and it has these call out options. So I actually can use um, little call out boxes or there's different ways to show this. I can just do a shape. Sometimes I like just doing uh, one of these more kind of traditional shapes or like a rounded, rounded edges rectangle um, or the little single corner snip, um, that sort of thing. A call out I don't think looks quite as good, but it does let people know like this is a quote. Um, but we can also do that with quotation marks. So there's lots of different ways. Anyways, I'm gonna take this, uh, I think I'm gonna do the rounded edges um, just we'll just do the rounded edges rec rectangle and just do something like that. Now again, I can change uh, the background uh, to be whatever color I want it to be. Um, I can change the uh, you know the thickness and the color of this. Now it doesn't pull in my colors from the um, from the template, which is kind of a problem, but I can I can come back to that in just a little bit. And then I can just double click inside this box to start typing text in. I could also just create a text box if I wanted to inside of it, that's another way to do it. But anytime you create a shape, you actually, it creates a text box inside of it. So I'm just gonna use that and I'm gonna copy and paste. And I'm gonna put the quotation so that we know that this is somebody talking. And again, let's uh, make this like 20, make it a little bit big. Um, I'm gonna do a semi bold uh, and let's go ahead and center it. And then maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can get this down to two to three lines instead of, there we go. So I want something kind of like that. And that's, that's okay for now. For our purposes for this video, that's okay for now. So um, again, I can make changes to any of these options here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save and close. And what that does is it pops it right in. And now the nice thing about drawings is they come in like an, an image. I can actually resize this to whatever size I want it to be. So if I feel like that's too big, then um, I can just make it bigger or smaller. And the other nice thing is that this has wrap text options. So what that means is I can put this in the middle of a paragraph if I wanted to. And let's say I go, oh, that's kind of, that makes this really hard to read over here. That's a little awkward. So I'm gonna double, just double clicking on it will bring me back into here. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make it tall and just be a few more lines, something like that. And then I hit save and close and it just updates automatically in here. Now it's super big, so I'm going to make it smaller so that I can still kind of see it. But notice how because I have a wrap text option, so then I can just kind of reposition this wherever I want it to be. And that makes it look a, a little bit nicer than this, right? This doesn't look quite as professional, but you should notice a difference between these two. This one, the text comes in just a little bit fuzzy. And this one, the text is really nice and clear. So we have some pros and cons to both of these. The text comes in a little fuzzy here, um, but it tends to look a little bit more designed, a little bit nicer, a little bit more professional, just the problem with the fuzziness. Um, so you kind of have to figure out which one you wanna, which one you'd like the most. We can make sure that we grab the right colors. Once we're over into this section here, into our actual policy brief, not inside of the drawing window. So let me go back. Um, I can come up and choose one of these colors. It doesn't matter which one, but I can come in. If I click on this plus button while I'm selected on this color, it's going to say, oh, what color do you want to change it to? I don't really want to change it. What I want is I want this number right here. This is called a hex number. And this is one way that you can use colors in different areas. So you can memorize that or write it down, or I'll, I'm just going to copy and paste it, 008080. And I'm going to come back into here. And when it loads, I'm going to select this. I'm going to come into my border color, hit custom, and it has a hex option up here. So I can just paste in that 008080 and hit OK. And now I've got that uh, border color. So I'm going to make that a little bit larger on the border color. So that's how you bring in like a call out and do a little um, little call out inside of the text. Again, I can, I can just move this around because I have text wrapping on. Uh, it makes it really easy for me to just move around and it looks really nice in the middle of all of this other text compared to this one, which can only be on one line. It doesn't look quite as nice, but the text is really nice and crisp and clear. Sometimes when we're designing our pages, we want to add in some objects to just make spruce them up a little bit. Um, not necessarily images, but um, objects. And so if I go to Insert Drawing, I'll show you what I mean, and then go to New, it brings up this drawing window. And I have a few options available to me here. As far as objects go, I have some arrows. Um, I have these different little connectors um, that I can just kind of drag in. This might be, you know, then maybe I make this uh, really thick. Maybe I use this to connect some other, uh, I, maybe I'll add another object to it, but let's say I've got these points on the end here. Um, and I'm trying to connect, maybe I'm connecting two different uh, boxes together um, or two different points or whatever it is. Like th these are just kind of some different design elements. So I could uh, do a little box over here. I'm gonna, now that's on top of that little circle and I actually want the circle to be on top. So I'm gonna go to order and send backwards. So that's on top. And then maybe over here I have a different shape um, I'm just I'm just playing around with some different options here. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I go to order, send backward. Now I've got I don't know what this is for, but I'm just giving you as an option. I can also type in these if I wanted to have some text in there. Um, again, I would edit this much more, but once I'm done, I can hit save and close, and it pops this image in there. Maybe that doesn't quite fit, but I just want you to know that there are some shapes available to you. And then once it comes in as an image, I can then use it uh, as, uh, I can do text wrapping or whatever I want with it. Now, sometimes these icons, um, 
I might want to find elsewhere instead of just using what's available here. I just want to point you to another resource called thenounproject.com. That's really great. Again, there'll be a link in the description below. Um, part of this policy brief, well, part of this paper that I copied and pasted in has to do with Indiana. So I'm going to find a picture of Indiana. I did a quick search on the Noun Project website. I like this one. I think this one's kind of cool. And then notice they're all, almost all of these are going to have a Creative Commons license, which means you do need to give credit. Usually you'll give that credit just somewhere in the references section, um, but sometimes you'll need to do it with the image. It kind of depends. But I'll click on get this uh, icon and I hit continue. It says this is what I need to attribute. Um, this is the what I need to put in my text somewhere saying that I used this image. And then I'm going to download the icon as a PNG file just to my computer somewhere. I'm just going to throw it on my desktop for now. Then when I come back into my policy brief, I would actually do insert image, upload from computer. And then I have noun, Indiana, choose. And then I can make this much, much smaller. And again, do a wrap around text. Again, it's just an option to use, but just so you're aware uh, of being able to use different objects inside of Google Docs. This section I'm going to talk about tables and charts. Now I have a table that I was going to put in here anyways, um, and I have it over here. So I'm going to copy and paste from Word into Google Docs. Tables are really good and they're helpful to just kind of see, um, but you may want to also add a chart to this, uh, basically of the same information. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to insert chart and then we have a couple of different options. In this case, it probably makes the most sense to do a bar or a column. Um, I'm gonna do a bar chart, but you can change it to whatever. So now I have a chart that I've inserted into here and I want to basically take this same information and make it into this chart. So what I can do is you'll notice that it's it's already linked to something. Basically what happened when I created this chart is it created a, uh, a bar chart. So if I go to open source, it's gonna open in this new window. Uh, it created a bar chart spreadsheet. Okay, if I change any of the um, pieces of text here, it will change my chart. So if I make this be 50, you'll notice that changed. I make this 10, that should drop down, etc. Now, for this particular one, I'm just going to pick percentage. That's the one that makes the most sense. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say 78. 10, that one was already 10, 4, 3, 3, 2. And of course, I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to see if I can just copy and paste this information in. And I'm going to delete the second section here. Okay, so now I can, now I've got basically my percentages in here because we know these are percentages. And I can actually just tell it that these are percentages. Of course, it made them much higher percentages than I wanted, but there we go. So now I've got my chart, and if I come back over here, and if I click on update, it will automatically update. Well, not automatically, because I had to click the button, but it pulled it in from this chart this Google Sheets that it created. Now, again, I can do all sorts of things with this. I just wanna show a couple of uh, specific things that uh, you can come in and you can change the, you can add the title to be whatever you want it to be. So this is, uh, I could change the fonts and all sorts of stuff if I wanted to make it fit with my theme, etc. Again, you can kind of play with these. What I want to show you is the horizontal axis. You can tell it um, how many values or what the maximum value you want it to be. So 
oh, I don't want, I want one for a hundred percent. So I can see that it goes all the way to a hundred percent. Um, I could actually add in um, additional grid lines if I wanted. Again, I don't, I'm not going to worry about this too much, but if I say I want more grid lines there and for my major grid lines, I want there to be six. So it's every 20% that we see one. So 20, 40, 60, 80. Then when I come back over here, I click update and it automatically updates with any changes that I made from this section. If I want to format a specific data point, so I can say I want classroom teachers to be this color. And then because I did that in this series section, if I go, I don't really like that color, I actually want it to be this kind of bright blue, uh, and I want this one to be a really dark whatever. So I can come through and change all of these. Again, this is something you'll probably want to play with a little bit more, but I just want you to know that, that that's how we can bring in some of this data. And again, I can resize this to be however big I want it to be. And then again, this can actually be, it's just like an image, this can be a wrap text uh, option. So if I want this to be right up here, let's make this a little bit smaller. And I want the text to be right next to it. I can have my, uh, my graph, my chart, and the text next to it because it has text wrapping options on. And if I ever need to edit it, okay, I can just click on it and I can go to open source and it will open up that Google Sheet, or in my case, I already had it open, and I can just make any changes I want to it if I realize, oh, I wrote down this wrong, this is actually 68%, and this is 20%. Then I can come back in here, update, boom, automatically uh, pulls that information in once I hit that button. So that's how you can do with charts, and if I want to uh, change this chart type, if I come back into here, okay, if I come up to my chart setup, I go, ah, you know what? I'd actually rather have a column chart instead. That's gonna make more sense. Boom, got my column chart. I come back over to here, update, and there it is. Now, it took all my colors away, which is annoying, so I'd have to redo all the colors. Um, but you've got lots of different chart options here. So you could, if there's something that would work better for you, um, I'm just showing the simple uh, bar and column charts, but it gives you an idea of how you can use uh, this with your policy brief text to combine those together. In this short section, I just want you to be aware that you can actually change the color of the pages inside of Google Docs. If you go to File, down to Page Setup, uh, there's actually a page color option. And I can change this to be whatever color I want it to be. So if I wanted it to have uh, a green tone to it because that's uh, part of my color scheme um, or this kind of muted blue, almost a teal, uh, then I can do that. And it might actually look really nice so you just have to be careful about how it fits with your template or with the other colors or things like that. Because if you have, for example, if I choose a darker color, it makes the text really hard to see. So if you have a darker color, then you might have to do change your font color to be white. Notice when I do that how that becomes a lot easier to see. So you have to kind of play with some different options if you have a dark colored background. But just so you know, you can change the background and as you uh, scroll down, you can see it changes it for all of the pages. There's not any way inside of Google Docs to only change one page color unless you did that in a separate Google document. But just so you're aware, you can change the uh, page color to be a different color. I'm gonna change mine back to white um, which means I also need to change this back to black. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to see it at all. But just wanted you to be aware that that is an option inside of Google Docs.
In this section, I'm gonna talk about images and how you can deal with images inside of Google Docs. Now this particular template came with an image already in here, it probably doesn't fit what you're gonna be talking about, so you're gonna to want to replace it. Now, if, if you right click on the image, there's actually an option for you to replace the image. And you have several different options here. You can just upload from your computer. If you've already downloaded one directly to your computer, you can just upload it. Um, maybe you've got a folder full of them, whatever. Um, I can get stuff from my Google Drive. I can get stuff from Google Photos. I can find an image somewhere else on the internet and use it by URL. Um, or camera, which I think is just connected to what, like a webcam or whatever your computer camera options are. If you do search from web, then it actually brings up and you'll notice it says only select images that you have confirmed that you have the license to use. So if I do a search for say school cafeteria, it brings up a whole list of potential images that I can use. So I can click on one and then I just hit replace and it's gonna pop that image right into there. So I just automatically replaced it. Um, one thing I don't love about doing the replace image and, and searching the web is it doesn't actually tell me who made this. Um, I wish it gave me a little bit more information, um, but it, it, at least you know that it's supposed to be uh, an image that's royalty free or meaning you could use it in, in whatever. Usually you wanna give some credit, but uh, that's one thing I don't love about Google's search options. There are a few different royalty free image sites that if you just do a search for royalty free images, um, there's a couple, one's called Pexels. I like Pexels um, and Pixabay I've used in the past. And then I just found this one called Unsplash. Um, and you can just do a search like this one I did school sports. This one was school food. This one has some sponsored images by Shutterstock. These ones are paid images, so you can't get those for free, but the ones down here you can get for free. Um, and this one I just did classroom. So again, you can kind of search through those and find those and typically you can download those and it will tell you whether or not you need to give credit. But those are some other sites you can use. Pexels, um, you can see right here, pexels.com, pixabay.com and unsplash.com. And I'll put links in the description below as well. Anyways, I can come back here. <laughs> now you notice when I put the image in, the image I actually selected was a longer image um, and it's the whole image is there, but it's just being cropped. In order to crop the image, you just double click and then you've got these uh, outside boxes here. So I could make this, if I want this to be a little bit smaller, but then I've got this white space here, which I don't love. So I can just drag that up. The black section is the crop and these blue ones are the full image. So let's say I wanted to crop that even more. I really just want to get just, just the um, tables there, tables and chairs. So anyways, there, those are some things that you can do to uh, bring images in. I wanted to come down here and show you I've got two other images. Again, I'm going to replace image. I'll just do a search on the web and we'll do school football. Yeah, we'll do like a football field. So that'll be one of the images that I bring in. I also can, by the way, go to insert image and do the same thing. Just if you didn't have an image that was already in, I can just go to insert image and do exactly what I've been doing. Again, these are cropped somewhat, so I can go in and I could edit my crops if I wanted to. And each one of these images, similar to the chart that I talked about earlier, I can do text wrapping. Um, I can tell what kind of margin I want it to, to be. I can tell if I want it to move with the text um, where I drag this around and um, or I can have this a fixed position on the page and it just Anyways, there's different options here. If I actually go into all image options, that's gonna open up this little sidebar here. 
I've got all sorts of options here. So uh, if I wanted to make this smaller, I could do that here as well as here. I could rotate it, which again, I can do that here as well, but it just gives me another option um, and another set. This also tells me or shows me a little bit easier or a little bit e in an easier way to understand what the different te text wrapping options are, inline with text, wrap text, or break text. If I want it to only wrap on a particular side, so if I say I only want it to wrap on the right side, then when I pull this, okay, it only wraps onto the right side, which means it leaves this left side open. <laughs> That's sometimes helpful because sometimes if you have a word like in or of, it will wrap to this side of the text, or I mean of the image. So just a couple things to keep in mind. I can increase the, the margins. So let's say I wanted it to be, I wanted there to be a larger space at the top. I can do that or I can just leave it. It's probably fine to just leave it usually. Anyways, these are a bunch of different options. I can also adjust this if I wanted it to be a little bit more transparent. Um, I could brighten it up or darken it. Um, I can increase or decrease the contrast. Usually I don't mess with those options too much, but just so you know that you have options available to you. And that's the basics of uh, bringing in images uh, to be able to use within Google Docs. While there's a lot more that you could do with Google Docs, this gives you a brief overview of some of the options that you have available to you. Um, when you're all done and you're ready to uh, submit this or you've just finished with the paper, you've done all your edits and everything, to get the document out of Google Docs and into a document that you can turn in on a canvas or print or whatever. I mean, you can print straight from Google Docs, but um, usually you want to go to download. You do have the option of downloading it as a Word doc. Sometimes the transition to a Word doc makes some of the formatting um, a little bit funky. And so I typically try to avoid just downloading it as a Word doc, unless I'm, I was just dealing with text, but with images and um, some of the other font choices that I had and things like that, sometimes it causes some issues. So usually what I'll do is just do a PDF document and just click on that and it's gonna bring up a box saying, okay, where do you wanna save this? Once it brings up that box, I can just tell it where I want it to go and I can hit save. Then I can open it up in whatever uh, PDF viewer that I have and I can scroll down and I can see that it's got all of my all the things that I edited right there and I've got the whole document ready to go, ready to turn in or print or whatever I need to do with it. So I usually do a PDF document. That seems to be the best way to go. And that's kind of a, again, an overview of how you might use Google Docs to do your policy brief, adding in some different options like the images, et cetera. Again, um, I've got links to the specific sections where I talk about each section below in the description of the video. Use those to jump back to specific points to rewatch. Um, uh, and uh, hopefully this was helpful in, in using Google Docs for this type of report.